Its production must have started towards the late 20s, maybe even earlier than that. And the main reason was it's actually a modulator for transmitters. What it does is it, it modulates the radio waves that the power transmitter sends with uh, music and voice, you know, in radio stations. Uh, they wanted a valve that is very, very clean and also very powerful. And they came up with the 845. It's extremely clean, so you can design very clean uh, amplifiers. Uh, the, it's, it's very inefficient, extremely inefficient. And efficiency means that it wastes a lot of power in relation to the power that it produces <clears throat> as an amplifier. And also, I mean, to get a proper power out of it, you have to give it at least 200 volts, maybe 250, maybe even 300 volts peak to peak. And only very recently, in the 90s, when people started rediscovering the valve sound in hi-fis, people started getting back into it. He actually built a light bulb, but then he also put, inserted in the top of the glass a little, like a pin, or like an electrode. Mm. And then he realised that um, if he connected this electrode to a positive battery, with respect to the filament, a, sm a small amount of electrical current will flow through that circuit. Later, uh, another American guy, he actually put something in between. Another electrode that was, was like a mesh. If that middle electrode, which was called then the, the control grid, was made negative with respect to the filament, the more negative it was becoming, the less electrons will reach the anode. The less negative, the more electrons will reach the anode. Now, you see the top, the mm. top is more abrupt than, than the bottom. The top one is greater distortion. It's, as we turn up the drive, there's a very abrupt cleap, and that is the, the grid current starts flowing through the control grid of the output tube. I love that, that's the one I like the most. You know, the bass for you. Really odd. We've got a nice sort of velvety kind of bass sound. Drop a distortion unit for it. That was a classic case of a failed fuse. And it looks so much like a perfectly working fuse. You know? Does that mean the fuse was faulty? Mm -hmm. It just went faulty. Fuses go faulty. Because it looks so much like a torch, a perfectly good working fuse. And for another guy, Hugo, I built a much more extreme version of the bass equaliser. Mm. Center them together. You've got to drive a, the spring reverb. That's good. But you also make um, really high quality, uh, 
hi-fi amplifiers mm. as well, uh, which presumably have completely different design constraints. You have to you have to use opposite all, all the all the things that you were using in a, in a distortion unit, which are like to drive it as hard as possible, and in in, in, in a hi-fi amplifier they become disadvantages. So, like I was showing before, the best, as, as I call it, the most linear space within the characteristics, you have to work there. It's heavily into classical music. And, and I just did a lot of work because I had to tidy up. In semiconductors, the electron flow occurs within an actual medium in valves is vacuum and I think that has a lot to do with, with the sound because like what happens within the molecular structure of a semiconductor or, or any other medium as a matter of fact electrons have to fight their way through they're not going through vacuum they're not going through something which is empty and they've got freedom of movement and in fact, I've also had, heard opinions of people on hi-fi, they prefer transistor amplifiers than amplifiers that are using chips to provide the power amplification. Or as a matter of fact, chips in the pre-amplifier section, where chips are little integrated circuits that, that contain loads and loads of little transistors. Because that takes it a step further, and then it's not just one piece of semiconductor material where the amplification takes place but it's like countless like a chip can contain 50 transistors so a lot of people can tell the difference between a chip transistor amplifier not a cheap but cheap like C H I P and a pure transistor amplifier which does sound very good and a lot of people prefer those amplifiers of the 70s for instance because they say they do give you a warm sound and some people will even tell you that, that some of them they sound like valves and taking this argument a step further you can see why valves sound good as well because they're single single amplifying elements that's what it was it was an accident it was an accident he was trying to find ways that so that the light bulbs uh, you know they're more uh, reliable and uh, brighter and you know Things like that. So he had some engineer in his workshops in the factory sort of playing around with light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs>